Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. I apologize. My net is coming up and down so I was trying to, you know, uh, or, or waiting for it to come uh, better. And now look like it's good. I miss you all and today we have a new topic. Actually, I made videos, short videos, but sadly, you know, people don't like, I don't know, I mean, people like live streaming. I don't know why. When the quality is the same and the information is the same. Today our topic about Yasser Qadri, and Yasser Qadri is a person who knows Islam very well. And because who knows he knows Islam very well, he don't lie. Because Islam forbid lying. All of us we knew that. And you know, you can lie only to your wife, to your family. You can lie to Mimi Hijab. Mimi Hijab can lie to Yasser, according to Islam. You can lie to your enemy. And I don't know who's left. I mean, a friend, enemy, family, who is left? So Islam do not allow lying. But you can lie in three cases. And now they are practicing the lies of three cases. And now not only that, they are fighting each other. And Mimi Hijab, he decided to go in war against Yasser Qadri. He said he will be refuted. So now Mimi Hijab, who could not debate me, who he is, uh, I forgot to mention that he have more skills he is a video editor. And this is what he did. He had an interview. Uh, we can say a 30 second interview with me. And he edited all my videos. And like in the one of the video, we'll make a video about it. Uh, just to follow up with those stories. The video editor person. And he played a part saying, Christian Prince saying to a Muslim woman, suckle me. When the fact it was his Muslim woman, she is the one who was saying bad things about Jesus. And I was quoting for her that you're a prophet said, suckle me. That coward, he edited my video and he says, a Christian prince. And he called me sexual predator. When the fact by doing that, he accused his prophet to be a sexual predator because I was quoting his prophet. And when he spoke to me, he, he played the video. They don't even dare to let you speak because they knew they are no match. They were terrified. And he have a kid this next to him, his Mimi is the name is Fifi, next to Fifi. And he is the one who did the editing for these videos. So all of them, they are a bunch of kids. And their addition, or let us say, playing with videos and people's words, does not stop with the Christians. It goes to everybody. For this religion cannot handle the truth. It cannot. And today we will see an example, clear example of such a thing, how the Muslims, they cannot handle the truth. Let us listen and love together. Mr. Qadi about today, inshallah. And um, what I wanted to start with, obviously, because of um, recent events, is um, kind of the race issue that we're kind of uh, being introduced in the, in the public discourse now. In terms of, it's not just about, obviously, George Floyd's death, but in terms of the whole... Uh, racism discourse in what capacity should Muslims get involved and how can they actually um, contribute to the discourse in a positive manner uh, Bismillah alhamdulillah salatu wassalamu rasulillah firstly thank you for um, uh, uh, wanting to interview me I, I really appreciated your very um, probing questions last time yeah, mashallah I like about you that you are asking uh, relevant questions uh, to an audience that I think is a little bit more niche audience because see some of these topics should not be like the race topic okay we can discuss but uh, from what I understand you have other questions as well and I think that is important that these platforms are given uh, to give these more detailed questions so I appreciate your honesty uh, and your willingness to, to, to die. I appreciate your honesty the honesty which later you will cut 30 minutes of my videos off I appreciate your honesty that you will edit Christian Prince video and you say Christian Prince, he said Muslim women have AIDS when the fact it was the Muslim women who said, this is why you are not married. Hello, for all the Christian women they have AIDS and they are whore. When I say to her the answer, they copy only the answer for they are video editors. I appreciate your honesty to the point you say Christian Prince, he said to a Muslim woman, suck on me and then calling Christian Prince, sexual predator for quoting your prophet and the practice we Muslim practice so when a Muslim speak about honesty we love a Muslim in the chat he is saying can you stop mocking and insulting Muslims 
why you always use bad words hmm. you see here you see another uh, fabrication where I say the bad word I did not I'm just talking right now and they are fabricating lies about me life on air where I insulted and where I use bad words your prophet is the one who said the one who is inherit or uh, proud about his inherit inheritance other than Islam go and tell him bite the penis of your father so here you see another coward who cannot refute me he fabricate the art text editor video editor Quran editors even Uthman himself he burned all the Quran because he had he liked his own version of it this is the Muslim uh, uh, ethic they are editor they cannot refute me, refute you so they transform what you say from good to bad all of this to make you lose your credit but you cannot do that people are laughing now here they are asking question about racism and mr yasser kadri is going to help us to understand racism racism is ugly racism is bad actually you know what I never saw racism ugly as the racism of Islam, and we will prove it in a few seconds. Dialogue in this regard. Uh, with regards to the race issue, subhanAllah, I mean, it's a very interesting time to see what is going on in this country. And uh, I gave a khutbah recently, also had an interview with Imam Zayd Shaq, uh, you know, and those are both online. And one thing that uh, really struck me, even when I was doing the Sira research, and it struck me even back then, 10 years ago, the uh, the importance that Islam stressed on this issue of all peoples being equal. Islam stressed that all people are equal. And he just said he learned that from the books of the Sirah. All right. You see, I'm not going to look to, to I'm not going to talk. I will let Yasser Kadri answer Yasser Kadri. What do you think? This is Yasser Kadri explaining to us the right of a Christian, uh, black people, Christian, Ethiopian people, Egyptian people, white people, Asian people. What is our right? You see this person, he is the one who is going to answer this person, which is the same person. Alhamdulillah. Yasser Kadri, he will tell you what is your right as a Christian under Islam, because Islam make all people equal. That Umar al-Khattab placed the conditions upon the Ahl al-Dhimma, meaning the non-Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, and the Sabians, and the Majus, everybody who was not a Muslim. Because in those days, in those lands, you basically had Jews, Christians, and uh, you had Majus, the Rustrians. These are the three main religions. So Islam make all people equal to the point, to the point from the start we say it's conditions. We put conditions on them. Imagine they come to your house. They come to your land, they take your land, you take your money, they take your, your property, and then they put conditions on you to live in them. Do you see the equality? Conditions. Otherwise, you die. I mean, Islam make all people equal. Tell us more about the conditions, please. Is that were there. That he placed conditions on them that they should not take any of the Muslim lands, i.e. the Muslim cities that had just been built, as an area to build their churches or synagogues or hermitages. And that any of their existing churches or synagogues can remain, but they cannot build on top of that. I mean, do you see how nice the right? From the beginning, they take our land, and now they are telling us we cannot build over the, our land because this is now their land. And not only that, if you have a church is built already, you cannot fix it, you cannot repair it, you cannot build over it. If it's collapsed, it collapsed, that's it. I mean, do you see the equal rights? Continue, please. They cannot make it more than it is. That uh, they must allow safe passage and hospitality to Muslims for three days in any of these places of worship. So in the whole Muslim land, uh, now that this land has been conquered, any Muslim comes. <laughs> Did he just say that? Muslim land. So if they conquer your land, this is Muslim land. It was 24 hours ago, it was your home, it was your church, it was your land, it was your country. 24 hours after, because of the justice of Islam, it is their land. You are just nobody. And not only that, a Muslim, he can go to any, not only church, by the way, any Christian, he have to open his house, his door for three days, three nights, eat free. 
How nice. A Muslim do not need hotel because Islam is teaching equality. You cannot let a Muslim stay outside your home. You have to open the door for him, him and his family and his kids, and they stay for three days, three nights, free food, and you don't even dare to question them why you are there. Do you see Yasser Kadri is explaining to you what is the right of a black African-American? A black African-American, George Floyd, if Yasser Kadri came to his house, he, uh, George Floyd had to open his house. The guy, he don't even have $20 in his pocket. The guy, he is a poor man, yet he have to open his house and give shelter and food for three days, three nights. And who is the one telling us the rights of the Christians? Yasser Kadri himself, who himself is speaking supposedly saying Islam is against racism. Existing churches or synagogues can remain, but they cannot build on top of that. They cannot make it more than it is. That uh, they must allow safe passage and hospitality to Muslims for three days. Notice they must. They, do you see the must? It's not an option. This is conditions. If you don't do them, you die. They kill you. You must. Islam is about equality. Days in any of these places of worship. So in the whole Muslim land, uh, now that this land has been conquered. And the filthy, he have no shame to call it the whole Muslim land when it is not their land. You know, the funny, they say to you that Palestine is for the Arab, but he is just mentioned that this is now they conquer it, never been before for the Arab. He just said this land never, never, never was their land. Now they conquer it, now it's our land. So before Omar al Khattab, he entered into Jerusalem, there was no single Arab there. And now just because they conquer it, it's our land. I mean, do you see? The truth is speaking. Islam is all about justice. Any Muslim comes to any church or synagogue or temple, they have the right to stay for three days. And they have the rights. I mean, do you see the equal rights? Christian, can Christian go to Mimi Hijab or Yasser Kadri house and stay for three days, three nights for free? No, you have no right. We have the right only. Be fed and then they can go on. They have to be fed too. This is why Mimi Hijab is getting so fat. His, his face became like a balloon. Their way. That uh, they, they have no right to publicly practice shirk or to spread doubts upon the people of Islam. You have no right to teach Christianity publicly. You have no right. Only Muslims have the right. This is why if you go in the Middle East, we Arab Christians, we have no right. You know, a Muslim can humiliate you in TV, they can make fun of your Bible, they can make fun of you. Always the Christians in Islamic TV programs, especially in Ramadan, they make them look like they are perverted people, when the fact their prophet is number one perverted person in the world. He married a six years old child, and he asked for the hand of Umu Habiba when she was uh, uh, one year old. So they speak about rights. You have no rights. We have the rights. So Islam is about equality. Isn't it? This is what this guy he said just in the previous video. Hmm? He said that. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Niche audience, because see, some of these topics should not be like the race topic. Okay, we can discuss, but uh, from what I understand, you have other questions as well, and I think that is important that these platforms are given uh, to give these more detailed questions. So I appreciate your honesty. Uh, I appreciate your honesty. I mean, the funny, nobody speak about honesty as much as they do, but they don't have it. Uh, and your willingness to, to, to dialogue in this regard. Uh, with regards to the race issue, subhanAllah, I mean, it's a very interesting time to see what is going on in this country. And uh, I gave a khutbah recently, also had an interview with Imam Zayed Shaq, uh, you know, and those are both online. They are making speeches against racism when Islam is nothing but racism. And one thing that uh, really struck me, even when I was doing the Sira research, and it struck me even back then, 10 years ago, the, uh, the importance that Islam stressed on this issue of all peoples being equal. And I'll just all give you people, two simple examples. Two simple examples, actually. Is any of this your examples? Continue with the examples, please. So they cannot practice shirk publicly, i.e., Anything they're doing of ibadah must be done inside of their places of worship. It cannot be done outside. And that they cannot call others to their worship. They cannot. You cannot. You see, I mean, you see the equality? 
Do you see that Islam is anti-racism? Isn't it? this is racism? Because Islam teaches you that Muslims are race. Actually, Muhammad, he made it clear that Muslims are the best of mankind. How they are the best of mankind? Read carefully with me. Muslims, they can do all the following things. The funny I see always Muslims saying that the Jews, they believe that they are the best of mankind or chosen people. The fact that Jews don't believe that they are the best of mankind, they believe they are chosen people. However, the Quran says that, and I will show you the verse. The verse, you true Muslims are the best people ever raised for mankind, means the best of the people for people as you bring them with the chain on their necks till they embrace Islam. He just said Islam make you equal. I mean, do you see how equal it is? Islam is so good. Muslims, they are ordered to treat you nicely. They will put a chain around your neck and they will bring you like a dog. So Yasser Qadri, he, if he have the power, he will go and put a chain around the necks of all the Christians in the world, Asian, Hindus, not only black people. For Islam consider itself as a race. If you are a Muslim, you belong to a race. And this race is the best of mankind. And they have the right to put a chain around your neck. And yes, sir, Kadri denied that. Actually, he's explaining that to us. He just said, you have no right for this. You have no right for those. All those are chains around your neck. So you will be humiliated and you will convert to Islam. You give it up. You want to live like a dog? Tell us more about the rights which Islam give to the Christians. Give da'wah to Christianity. They cannot spread doubts to the Muslims. They cannot uh, criticize Islam. I mean, Islam treat people equally. <coughs> you cannot criticize Islam. So if what, what, what if I did? We kill you. We kill you. If you criticize Islam, we kill you. You cannot. I mean, this is the rights of, you know, this is, this is the, Islam is amazing, beautiful. We can make fun of your book. You can, we can beat you. We can kill you. We can rape your wife. We can take your money. And you cannot even say this is wrong. You cannot. Okay. Um, that they cannot build structures taller than the structure of the Muslims. Uh oh, if my neighbor, he have a house and his house is one floor, I cannot make two, two floor. <laughs> Why? Because we're equal. <laughs> but my neighbor, the Muslim, he can make two floor, but I cannot make higher than his floor. I mean, even, even in building a house, you have no right like the Muslims that they cannot teach their children the Qur'an. Now, why would Umar bin Khattab prohibit the Ahli Kitab from teaching their children the Qur'an? Why? I mean, even teaching the Qur'an to the children is not allowed for Christians? Yes. Explain to us why. Qur'an, because the purpose of a, a Kitabi teaching his child the Qur'an would not be for Islamic purposes. It would be for what? To argue, to debate. To, to, to. This is the uh, one of, uh, you know, those, I mean, you see, I mean, hello, Islam is against racism. I mean, all those rights are given to the Christians. You have no right to even criticize Islam. You have no right to teach Islam to your children because we want your children to be stupid. So we can fool them. We can say to them there is scientific miracle in the Quran. And Allah split the moon. There are many people that speak about the thing that they did the Quran and the thing that they are proving. If you go to the thing, you will find that the thing that they did the Quran. Ah, uh, here we go. A guy who spit all over the place, saying nothing makes sense. You cannot criticize him. You cannot even teach your children the Quran. Why? Because you criticize Islam and then they will know Islam is a fraud. Tell us more. To basically uh, learn how to basically, uh, from their perspective, look at the shubuhat and then cause doubt. So, don't teach the children our book. That's if they want to convert when they're adults to something else, but don't bring this into their uh, curriculum. That they should not be riding camels or horses, but only riding donkeys and mules.
You cannot even ride caravan horses. Hello, I mean, Islam is against racism. So imagine if Yasser Kadri take over America and all of America was a black African Christians. Yasser Kadri, God, he says to Yasser Kadri, if you see a black African riding a horse, you kill him. Because he's not allowed. Horses is only for Muslims. Camels are only for Muslims. For you, you get the donkey. And not only that, by the way, when a Christian, he ride the donkey, he have to face the ass of the donkey not the head of the donkey. Do you believe it? Not only you ride a donkey, you cannot face the front. You have to turn. Imagine you are riding a donkey and you're face to the back. But Islam treats all people equally. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. That they are not allowed to be spying on the Muslims, obviously. That we can spy at you, but you cannot spy at us. Let us make it clear. That they uh, should walk on the side of the path and not in the middle of the path. You cannot walk in the middle of the street. You have to walk in the sewage. You see here it says, he says you have to walk in the side of the path. This is the sewage. In old days, they have a sewage open in the road. So when a person, he walk in the street, you know, he, uh, uh, he walk in the road, not in the sewage. Muhammad, he said clearly, well, you have... To force him to walk in the sewage for he is a christian for he is not a muslim he is not equal abu Huraira reported the prophet said and the grant him peace grant him peace i mean do not give the people of the book a greeting first force them to narrowest part of the road i mean if you are an african-american you are george floyd name hmm? and you are walking with Yasser Kadri, you cannot go and walk in the street like everybody. You have to walk in the sewage. Have you ever heard of a fraud bigger than this fraud? And yet those people are lecturing us about racism? Isn't it the Quran in chapter 9, verse number 28? Say Christian, Jews, Hindus, Buddhas, anyone as a Muslim, he is filthy. وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ نَجِسٌ Those who they are mushrikeen, which means non-Muslims, are najis. What najis mean? Filthy. And this is why there's no go zone. Islam is so good, people are equal to the point, if you go to Mecca, they kill you. For Muhammad, he forbid that. Why? Because you are filthy. Islam is very wonderful religion. If you want to watch more about the rights which Yasser Kadri explained him, by the way, he says later that some people, they might say this is not fair. Yes, uh, 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 Omar al-Khattab, he was not practicing fair. It's the fact, no, a'uzu billah, he's fair. The Muslims are proud about Omar al-Khattab. And by the way, Omar al-Khattab is practicing what Muhammad ordered. This is not his own propaganda. If, this is Ibn Kathir here, you will see. It says that Christians, you know, the Muslims, they've been ordered to kill the Christians and steal their money. Because when Muhammad, he forbade everybody from going to Mecca except Muslims, he said to them, if you fear poverty, Allah will reach you. How? By his bounty. What is the bounty? The verse after it says, kill the Christians, kill the Jews until you get their money or die. And he forced the jizya. And here you will see, it says, paying the jizya is a sign of what? Kufr and disgrace. They lie to you and they say, Jizya, don't you pay tax? Christians at that time, they are living in Islamic state, which is not their state. They pay tax. This is a lie. Jizya is not a tax. It's a sign of disgrace because Jizya means it's a penalty and you have to pay it with humiliation until, it says here, until they are doing it willingly and humiliated. Why? Because they are defeated. Feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated, as you see. This is the Muslim interpretation for the verse. This is what Muhammad told them. And then here, Ibn Kathir, is quoting for you that the Christians, always they have to be miserable. Hindus have to be miserable. Anyone is not a Muslim have to be miserable. The Muslim, they have the right to make your life misery. Disgrace, humiliated. And this is what Omar al-Khattab is doing. 
لا تبدأوا اليهود والنصارى بالسلام don't initiate salam to them here says that the prophet says don't initiate salam to the Christians and the Jews why Muhammad why he said he explained and if you meet them in the road force them to the most narrowest alley which means the sewage this is why the leader the faithful Ibn Umar al-Khattab may Allah pleased with him Allah is so pleased with Umar because he was practicing Islam demanded his will on conditions to meet with the Christians those conditions to ensure their continue, continued humiliation do you see it to, to ensure what continue of humiliation for them he is following the prophet teaching the perverted prophet sexual predator who said to women suckle me and mr yasser kadri is telling us reading for us our rights what is our rights in islam those are our rights they lie to you they fool you but they are a bunch of liars that their stamps and their signature should not be in Arabic. They should write in their languages. Arabic is our language. You have your... Arabic is not your language. Never write Arabic. Why? The fact, because they don't want them to merge in the community. So always we will know who is, who is the Christian, who is the Muslim. Even their clothes will be different. Even their hairstyle will be different. Language. That, and these are some of the more controversial ones, that they must shave a part of their head so that they are recognized to be Ahli Kitab. You have to shave a part of your head. What is that? The half of your head have to be shaved, almost the half or even more, in the front. So you will look stupid and funny. You cannot shave all your head. You have to shave the front of your head, all the way to the middle of your head. So everybody will laugh at you because you look like a joker. Even if you are a kid, imagine you shave the head of your five years old kid, boy, or a girl, if she walk in the street. Islam treat us equally, my friend. We cannot dress like them. We cannot eat like them. We cannot speak like them. We cannot have hair style like them. We cannot have houses like them. We cannot ride the camel like them. We cannot ride the horse like them. Those are the justice of Allah. And those filthy, they are schooling us about the right of the black people in America. In, in, in America. There, is a, there is a gentleman, I ad advise all of you to watch his videos. His name, Larry, Larry Elder very very smart person and he is a black man just to answer the muslims about their lies about racism in america racism is exist everywhere there's no question about that but we cannot say america is racist just three years ago you idiot the president of usa was a black man which means the 90 percent who they are not black they voted for black man so you filthy can you make can you make in your country back stand a black man, a president. When the last time we have a caliphate, he was a black man. Actually, after Obama became a president, the king of Saudi Arabia forced, because they want a Muslim about show off, for the first time they made an imam, a black man in the Kaaba. Bilal the Ethiopian, if you remember him, he used to be ordered to call for the prayer. He used to be ordered to do everything. Muhammad, he promised him heaven, but he never gave him a freedom. Muhammad is a slave owner of a black people. He have a slave girls and slave boys and slave men. And not only that. Bilal always big for his freedom. Bilal, he came to Omar, sorry, to, to Abu Bakr, and he said to him, if you bought me for the sake of Allah, we will show you the video, actually the, the hadith, then release me for the sake of Allah. 
If you bought me for the sake of yourself, then keep me for the sake of yourself. Poor guy, begging for his freedom. Muhammad died, never gave him freedom. Abu Bakr died, everybody died. All the white Arab men, they are sleeping in their bed and the poor black person, Bilal, who is a Muslim now, he is just a servant, a slave. But Islam, remember, gave everybody rights, which means even you can be a Muslim, just because you are black, you are still going to die as a slave. This is Bilal begging for his freedom. He said, Abu Bakr, if you have bought me for yourself, then keep me for yourself. But if you have bought me for Allah's sake, then leave me for Allah's sake. That is the story of a black African. And not to forget to mention that Allah, he curse you and he make you black if you do something wrong. So Muhammad here is telling the story about a person who accused his wife lying that she is doing something wrong. And then Muhammad, he wished him that he will have a black son as a penalty from Allah. So Allah make him black, he's a child. Why? Because he accused his wife of doing something wrong. Muhammad, he made it clear that the most person who Allah he hate is a black man. You will see here it says, The most hateful among, among the creation of Allah is one black man. Who? Black man. The most person Allah he hate. Who is that person? He is the devil. He will come as a man and he will lead those who they are. Muhammad, he don't agree with them. They call them Khawarij. He's not a white man. Who is the one who is going to destroy the Kaaba? A black man. A black man who is an Ethiopian. He is going to destroy the Kaaba. Let me find the Hadith. Hold on. <laughs> and they lecture us about the right of and racism. Uh, <clears throat> give me a second to find the video and please don't forget uh, to download the video as soon as it is ready it takes about 20 minutes for YouTube to process it because we don't keep my videos as you know as you see he is the one who will destroy the Kaaba he is an Ethiopian African, a black man, who is going to be the devil, who is going to destroy the Kaaba. You see him? Even Muhammad, he called black people raising head. The Arab, they forced their black slaves to go and die in the war. And they made them even leader of a groups because they are very good build. They have a, they have a good building. I mean, a body, and they are good in fighting. So only in the war time they make them a leader of a group. After that, they are back home to wash your dishes. Actually, in case you do not know, there is a revolution. And let me find it for you online. It's called Revolution of the Zinj. Zinj is a word mean Negro. Let me find it for you. All right, we found for you some information here. You can go and read for uh, about it, even from like normal website, which, uh, like, uh, but I advise you to search more. It's called the Zinj Rebellion. What is a Zinj Rebellion? 
Muslims were capturing black slaves from around Africa, bring them as slaves for them all over the Caliphate land. And they became so big in number to the point they outnumber the white Arab man. So they made a revolutionary. And if you go and read about it, you will see that those Zinj, as they called them at that time, the Muslims, a huge land, there was no white people in it, except black people who they are working as slaves, sex slaves, farmer slaves, all kinds of slaves. And their population becomes so big to the point like every white man, he have like 200 black men and their family for sure and their children. So the population became so big in Iraq to the point the black people, they make revolution seeking their freedom and they took over big portions of Iraq and then they killed them all. What happened to the black people in Iraq? As long there was slaves, at that time and they are a huge in number how come they disappear because Islam protect you as a black person they kill them all you can search it you can study it and not to forget to mention that every single African American brought to America I mean talking about the grand the grand grandfather captured by the Arab Muslims in North Africa sold to the white man in Europe and then sent all the way to America. This is the truth. And yet they are talking about racism. I'm not going to keep you for long. I'm trying to keep this video shorter, but I want to share some love with you before we leave. Actually, I forgot I was going to play for you the video of, uh, uh, of our brother, Larry, very smart person. Let us hear what he say. And we step foot outside the comfort of our homes. Can't even go for a damn jog, man. Like WTF, man. Are you kidding me? No, man. FR, are you kidding me? I'm sorry, Amon, rest in paradise. And my prayers and blessings sent to the family. <laughs> my goodness. We are literally hunted every day, every time we leave our homes? Sigh. Just a few facts for Mr. James. Check this out. Fact. Of the 400,000 non-homicide violent black-white crimes, 85% are black perp, 15% the other way around. Fact. Blacks kill more blacks, nearly 7,000 last year, than the KKK did in its entire history. Fact. A young black man is seven or more times more likely to be murdered than a young white man. And again, almost always by a young black man. Fact. Blacks kill two times as many whites, 500, as whites kill blacks, 250. Fact. Blacks, 13% of the population, commit 50% of the murders. Fact. Of the 50% of the homicides in this country that are committed by blacks, they are almost always committed by other blacks usually young black men. This means roughly 3% of the population is responsible for nearly half of the nation's homicides. Fact, the number one cause of preventable deaths in this country for young white men is accidents, you know, like car accidents. The number one cause of preventable deaths in this country for young black men, homicide. Fact, Chicago, murder capital of the country in terms of absolute numbers. The city is a third black, a third white, a third Hispanic. Blacks account for 70% of the homicides, and by the way, nearly 75% of them are unsolved. Now, these awful crime stats stem from one primary reason, the absence of fathers in the home. Forget about Larry Elder. Barack Obama once said, a kid raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. This is the number one problem facing the country, not white racists hunting down black joggers for crying out loud. Thank you, Larry. And here we expose them. We, you know, we as, uh, uh, especially in America, I live in America, and this Yasser Kadri live in America, and he knew better. But they are cowards, they ride the waves. And we show you how you as a black, you have no right even to have a hair in your head. You have to shave the front of your head. How you cannot even ride a mule. You cannot ride a horse. You can ride a camel. You have to ride a donkey and your face facing the ass, the bum of the donkey, the tail of the donkey. You cannot walk in the street with Muslims equally. You have to walk in the sewage. Muslims, they have to humiliate you. They have to spit in your face and they have to take your income and to protect you from killing you by themselves. And then they speak about racism in America.
And but for sure, if this guy was a white man saying what he just said, they will accuse him of racism and YouTube will take his video down. And I'm sure, actually, they accuse him to be a liar and they accuse him to be a, a racist. I'm not, I'm not going to be surprised if they accuse him to be a white man too. So my friend in America, three years ago, we have a black African president. When the last time you have an, an African caliphate in Saudi Arabia, in Pakistan, when the last time you have a Christian uh, uh, president? You see, in India, just a few years ago, the Hindu, they voted and they select a Muslim president. In India, when the Pakistani and this Yasser Qadri is from Pakistan is going to accept to have a Hindu president, that will never happen. We share with you the hypocrisy of those person. And now we finish with a prayer for the sake of Allah, because Allah is the one who is going to help us to understand what Islam is about. هم اليهود لعنهم الله وغضب عليهم وجعل منهم القرادة والخنازير وتأذن لا يبعثن عليهم إلى يوم القيامة من يسومهم سوء العذاب هم فتنة للمسلمين والمسلمون ضد لهم إلى يوم الدين وأخبرنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أنهم لا يزالون في نحور المؤمنين حتى ينزل عيسى عليه السلام قبل يوم القيامة. So to make it simple, Islam is teaching all people are equal, but the Jews and the Christians are pigs and filthy. And not only that, Allah want to kill them all, and He is going to make the Muslims kill them all. I'm going to skip a little bit of the video, and then we will see what will happen at the end. The teaching of Allah, the peaceful teaching of Allah. Let us see. All right. Even Jesus, Isa the Muslim, he will come to kill the Jews. Listen carefully. Jesus will come and do jihad and he will force all the Christians to convert to Islam and he will kill all the Jews. ويخرج في مطاردة الدجال فإذا رآه الدجال ذاب كما يذوب الملح في الماء. Here you see that Jesus must be God because according to the story, when Shaitan he see the Messiah, he will be dissolved like salt dissolved in water. Ask yourself why? What kind of a power he have? The Shaitan he jumped in the mouth of Muhammad and he made Muhammad even speak in satanic verses. But when Shaitan he see Jesus, he will be dissolved like salt, and we just heard it. كما جاء عن رسولنا صلى الله عليه وسلم فيدركه في اللد اللد مدينة في فلسطين فيها أكبر مطاراتهم اليوم فيدركه في اللد فيرميه بحربته فيقتله فيجعل الله قتله على يد عيسى بن مريم وينقض المسلمون على اليهود Hold on All people are equal and we don't teach hate You see imagine if we change the word here Jews and we make it black so the Muslims then will bounce on the Jews and kill them. Here, what if we take the word Jews? If what if the Jew is a black person, Ethiopian Jew? Hmm? According to Islam, just because you are a Jew, we will kill you. Listen carefully. فيقتلونهم ولا يبقون منهم نفسا حتى أن الحجر والشجر يقول يا مسلم هذا يهودي خلفي تعال فقتله. Even stones will share in the ethnic cleansing, according to Islam. If a Jew, he tried to hide behind a tree or a stone, the stone will speak, say, hey, Muslim, Yasser Kadri, come and kill this Jew, he is behind me. And especially if this Jew is a black man, I think this, the stone is going to scream louder, for Islam is against black color. If you remember, Muhammad, he made it clear that the three things can disturb Muslim prayer. Black dog, a woman, and a donkey. And when they ask Muhammad, why the black dog? What distinguished the black dog from yellow dog, blonde dog? 
Muhammad he made it clear that the black dog is the devil. Why? Just because of his color. We showed you that Allah he hates most of mankind a black man. Shaitan is a black person. Even black animals, they are treated, discriminated differently in Islam. They ask Muhammad, what feature in there in a black dog which distinguish it from red dog and yellow dog? He said, oh, son of my brother, <laughs> uh, let me ask my brother, my prophet Mimi Hijab. I ask him, okay. He said to me, as you are asking me, which means what distinguish the black dog from yellow dog, yeah, white dog. He said, the black dog is the devil. So Islam discriminates you in every stage. Islam is a cult based that they are the best of mankind and they have the license to kill anyone who is not from their kind. Islam teach you that you are a kind and this kind is superior. They speak about white supremacists. Islam teach white supremacists too. This is why if we go in the Quran, we will find tons of verses speaking about Allah will punish those who don't believe in him and made them black. Do you know that? And there's many verses in the Quran saying that. Chapter 3, 106 is one of them. When Allah, he make all the faces of the Muslims white and all the faces of those who they are not Muslims are black. If you don't believe me, go and read the interpretation. If you go to chapter 27, verse number 82, you will see that Allah, he will send an animal. It's called a jassasa. And a jassasa is going to have a stick in its hand and is going to hit you in your face and is going to make you white if you are a Muslim and was going to make you black if you are not a Muslim. Actually, there's a hadith where Muhammad, maybe the admin can post it. He said that Allah, he created the white man like white ant from the right shoulder of Adam. And he said to them, go to heaven. And I don't care. And he created the black people from the left shoulder, which means the bad shoulder. Always left mean bad in religion. So the bad, sh the, the, the left shoulder. And he said to them, you go to hell and wala ubari. And I don't care. Allah, he created, according to Islam, the black people to go to hell. They lie to you, they fool you, and they say to you, it doesn't say that, CP. And here you will see how Allah, he will make all the believers white. Read with me carefully. Let us see. I hope they did not do editing toward this because they are trying to hide all the stuff in their, in, in their garbage books. It says here that this beast will come and is going to hit you in the face. And as you see, he will make a white spot in your face, which is going to spread until all his face shiny white as a result. This is for who? For the Muslim. And then the one who is disbeliever, the beast will hit him in his face and he will make his face black. So when the Muslims and the Christian, they sit down together in the judgment day, Allah will make a black spot on your face if you are a Christian and you will become a totally black person as a penalty according to Islam and that penalty is how Islam look at you as a black person yet they want to give you a speeches about rights I'm going to stop here so you can download the videos I will keep the videos only maximum for five hours so please download it as soon as it's ready. It takes 20 minutes for it to be here. We will be live on air again, I hope, tomorrow, if I can. And I miss you all. I love you all. And we love the Muslims. And we are the Christians who we are one family by Christ. Jesus said, the Bible says, that no Greek, no Hebrew, no free, no slaves in Christ. In Christ, there is no Asian. There is no black. There is no, there's nothing except that we are children of God. Christianity not only teach you that we are equal, it teach you that we are children of God. A black person, he is a child of God. An Asian person, he is a child of God. He's not just a child, he's a child of God.
Racism is from the devil. And this is why Muhammad is nothing but racism person. Do you know that George Floyd is not allowed to enter Mecca because according to the Quran chapter 9 verse 28 he is filthy? And yet they speak about racism. Do you know? Why well, you want to repeat those things? Maybe sometime we have to repeat. Because people are deaf. People, they are following a scam. People don't want to see the truth. That until now in Saudi Arabia, there is sign says Muslims only. Muslims only. There's a highway where only Muslims can go there. And yet they want to school us about racism. Why Muslim only? Because Muslims are clean. Non-Muslims are filthy. What will happen if I go in the street where it says Muslim only? You will be killed. For the Prophet said that this is a land, nobody can enter it. And not only that, Muhammad, he made it clear. If he is victorious, he is going to cleanse the Arabian Peninsula from the Christians and the Jews. He will kill them all. And the lucky one will, you know, will run away. The prophet said, I will certainly expel the Jews and the Christians from the Arabian Peninsula as to leave only Muslims in it. And they say to you, Islam treat people equally. And they speak about genocide against the Indian in America. And they speak against slavery of African American, when the fact Islam is nothing but a filthy cult. Kill, conquer, steal money in the name of their God, the Satan. Thank you very much for being with us. May the Lord bless you. If you are an Indonesian person and you did not get my copy of a free translation of the deception of Allah, you should know that it's already online and people are downloading the book and they are reading it. I will try later to post a link for it or make a special video about it so people can get the copy of that book. May the Lord bless you. Christ is our Lord. We love the Muslims. We are a family with, the, with, with, with black, African, Asian, white, Arab, me, myself as an Arab. I have, I never and I will never discriminate for this is not what Christ he taught us. Christ is about love, about mercy, about equality. In heaven, we will be all together. There is no black, there is no white, there is no Asian. We will be children of the King of Kings. The King of Kings, they call me, they say, why you call yourself a Christian prince, giving yourself a title? For God, he gave us titles, all of us. We are a prince and princes of God, for he is the King of Kings, and we are his children. While in the Quran, Allah, he says he created people so they can worship him and be his slaves. Our God do not need slaves, my friend. It's your religion. Our God, he wanted us to be his beloved children. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. The world, not the white, not the Jews, not the Arab, the world. He sent who? His begotten son to every one of us. Islam is racist. Islam is a cult. Islam is filthy and you get served. I want to see how many of you download the video and please change the title. Don't make all of you the same title so it will not appear in one page. And you can cut the pieces if you wish. Feel free. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we get busted every day. See you soon again. Take care.